Selling This Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, September 8th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. This week, Hyundai released details on their 2025 Ioniq 5, which will arrive in dealerships this fall with some interesting updates. Design changes include a restyled front and rear bumper, new spoiler, improved aerodynamic wheels, and three new matte exterior color options. Inside, the model features redesigned climate controls, updated center console, physical controls for heated seats, and a new steering wheel. They also added heated rear seats for SEL trims and above. Among the technology and safety upgrades are standard wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, an updated digital key 2 premium, over-the-air update support, smart cruise control 2, driver monitoring and hands-on detection built into the steering wheel a rear windshield wiper and washer, and some trim-specific safety features. New standard range models will include a larger 63 kilowatt hour battery up from 58 kilowatt hours, and long range battery packs will grow to 84 kilowatt hours from 77.4 kilowatt hours. Of course, range is also improving across the board. All wheel drive models will be rated for 250 to 280 miles. The rear wheel drive base SE trim model will be rated for 240 miles, and higher rear wheel drive trim levels will be advertised with 310 plus miles of range. There is also a new variant in the lineup. This off-road inspired XRT trim sits just below the high performance Ionic 5N. Much like Ford's Mustang Mach-E Rally Edition, it appears to be targeting Subaru buyers and outdoor enthusiasts. Aesthetically, the XRT can be identified by black mirror caps, two exclusive exterior colors, unique front and rear bumpers, side skirts, and wheels, and of course, XRT badging. The interior will have h tex synthetic leather seating surfaces with an XRT pattern incorporated. All-wheel drive, all-terrain tires, and an 84 kilowatt hour battery pack are standard with the XRT. The uniquely tuned suspension will be lifted by about an inch, bringing up the ground clearance to seven inches. Consequently, approach and departure angles improve to 19.8 degrees on the approach and 30 degrees on the departure. All 2025 Ionic 5 trims will be manufactured with the North American Charging Standard port designed by Tesla. This is expected to be the first non-Tesla EV with a native NAX port. It unlocks access to over 17,000 Tesla supercharging stalls across North America. In fact, Hyundai made it a point to mention that all new or refreshed Hyundai EVs will ship with an integrated NAX port beginning in Q4 of 2024. For Tesla drivers concerned about overcrowding, remember, there are 27,000 supercharger stalls on Tesla's North America fast charging network. 10,000 stalls will continue to be exclusively available to Tesla owners. I'd like to take a minute to clarify some terminology here. A supercharger stall is equivalent to one connector. Any given North American Tesla supercharging location could have between eight and 100 stalls. The 2025 Ionic 5 will continue to support DC fast charging on the combined charging system standard using an adapter. Networks like Electrify America or EVgo generally offer CCS compatible EV charging dispensers, which often have two connectors per stall. In most cases, only one connector can be used at a time. CCS networks often advertise the connector count, which can be a bit misleading because only half are usable concurrently. The 2025 Ionic 5 will be the first model manufactured at the brand new Hyundai Motor Group Metaplant America facility in Georgia. Hyundai says all models produced at this plant are expected to be eligible for a $3,750 U.S. tax credit at start of sale. Eventually, Hyundai anticipates the U.S.-built 2025 Ionic 5 models will qualify for additional federal tax incentives, but they do not provide a specific timeline for meeting the program requirements. All Hyundai EV leases continue to qualify for the full $7,500 credit. What do you think of these changes? Compact off-road electric SUVs like the Mustang Mach-E Rally, the upcoming Rivian R3X, and this Hyundai Ioniq 5 XRT have been getting a lot of attention lately. Which piques your interest most? It might be a while before we can get behind the wheel of the Rivian or the Hyundai, but I had a blast driving the Mustang Mach-E Rally out at Dirtfish Rally School in Washington just a few months ago. I'll include a link to that detailed coverage in the video description if you'd like to check it out.
We are fast approaching the October 10th unveiling of Tesla's autonomous taxi on the Gen 3 platform, along with a few other things. We might have also gotten a glimpse at one of those other things this week. Wireless patent documents regarding Tesla's forthcoming wireless charging solutions began circulating on the X platform. It appears as if their 2023 Wiferion acquisition is about to bear fruit. As we've covered in previous episodes of The Current, Tesla has shown photos of the Tesla Model S using a rear-mounted charging pad, and the Tesla Cybertruck parts guide shows that the vehicle supports a wireless charging module as well. Most of all, it makes sense for a fleet of fully autonomous robo-taxis to be able to clock off duty in order to recharge as easily as today's household robo-mowers or robot vacuums do. Patent documents also began circulating with more detail about Tesla's unboxed production process, which had been outlined back in March at the company's investor day. This abandonment of the assembly line and significant parts reduction should enable lower production costs and higher throughput. Some guests have already received invitations to the Warner Brothers movie lot in Hollywood, California for the event. The private property is expansive and would support legal use of the robo-taxis without a human backup driver. Much of HBO's dystopian robot series Westworld was filmed at the same location. Might Tesla's Optimus bots make an appearance? The studios aren't far from the Tesla diner and drive-in theater, which appears to be nearing completion. Might the two coincide? We are looking forward to some razzle-dazzle in October, and Volkswagen is set to capture some of the spotlight. Their Scout brand has confirmed that they'll be finally unveiling their first EV, which had originally been slated for this summer. We'll get to see at least one of Scout's first two vehicles on October 24th. Back in March, the brand confirmed that an SUV and a pickup truck would go into production in 2026 on a brand new off-road capable platform. Volkswagen said Scout would produce the most off-road capable Volkswagen products and the most American Volkswagen products ever. They also stated that Scout vehicles would have native NAX charging ports. Leadership remarked that rear steering, vehicle-to-load capability, and emphasis on rear tactile buttons and knobs would be integrated. Solar charging was also mentioned, which makes sense because Magna Steyr is involved with development. Magna produced the Fisker Ocean EV, which incorporated a rooftop solar system. As we've covered in previous episodes, Scout vehicles will be produced at a dedicated plant in South Carolina, which is currently under construction. Is anybody else super excited for this brand's revival? Do you think it will live up to the hype? Volvo Cars held their Capital Markets Day event in Gothenburg, Sweden, and provided some updates on their electrification strategy and product roadmap. Back in 2021, Volvo was one of the first automakers to commit to an all-electric model lineup. They promised to discontinue the production of new internal combustion engine models by 2030. They have abandoned that commitment. Now, the company aims for 50 to 60 percent of all global sales to be electrified by 2025. They aim to be 90 to 100 percent electrified by 2030. It's important to remember that electrified only means that there is a battery and an electric motor somewhere in the powertrain. Fortunately, the company says they are still planning to roll out new all-electric models. They said they will continue updating and adding to their lineup of hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles as well. The roadmap includes five all-new electric vehicles, including the ES90 full-size sedan. It's slated to be revealed in March of next year, followed by the EX60 mid-size SUV sometime in 2026. The EX60 will be the first vehicle on their next-generation SPA3 platform manufactured in Gothenburg, Sweden. It incorporates the new Superset technology stack, which launched first in the new EX90. The Superset tech stack includes an AI core compute architecture supported by NVIDIA hardware. This software-defined vehicle architecture will be utilized in their new all-electric vehicles. Volvo announced upcoming battery as a structure system with higher energy density cells, new in-house made electric motors, and new mega casting manufacturing processes too. Volvo is owned by a Chinese company and manufactures many of its vehicles in China. With significant new US, Canadian, and EU tariffs on Chinese EVs, it makes sense that Volvo has been forced to reevaluate its passenger vehicle electrification strategy. On the commercial side of things, however, Volvo keeps on trucking. 
they've announced a new long-range electric heavy-duty semi called the FH Electric. They're touting up to 373 miles of range from a single charge. Volvo's current Class 8 model, the VNR Electric, achieves only up to 275 miles. Volvo attributes the range increase to smaller e-axle motor technology and a multitude of battery and powertrain improvements. So far, Volvo has sold over 3,800 electric trucks across eight all-electric medium and heavy-duty truck models so far in 46 countries. The FH Electric is scheduled to hit the market in the second half of 2025. Many of you who tune into The Current each week might not realize that our team actively publishes on several channels and platforms. This channel is where we upload news and mainstream content. The at Misco Electric Industry channel is where you'll find in-depth business stories, factory tours, and our In Charge series featuring interviews with EV industry leaders. The at Misco Electric Ride Reviews channel is where we publish detailed reviews of e-bikes and nano mobility products. This past week, we expanded that further by publishing our first electric motorcycle review. After spending months riding the Rivet Anthem several hundred miles, I think we've put together the most comprehensive review of the electric commuter motorcycle anywhere. I've placed a link to that video in the description and I hope you'll tune in and subscribe to that channel if you haven't already. Several more electric motorcycle and e-bike reviews are currently in production and you won't want to miss them. Well, that's all for today's episode. If you found value in this series, I hope you'll consider sharing a link to this episode online and joining us on other social media platforms like X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up to the minute insights and exclusive content. Thank you so much for watching this latest episode of The Current. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.